Hi guys, welcome back to Infinite Possibilities, the podcast where we explore the lives of amazing people, their choices, challenges and opportunities. And today I have a very, very special guest, Julia! Woohoo! Hello, Internet. The one and only Julia, back from overseas. So, what an honour to have you. Good to see you too. <laughs> the Wing Chun salute just comes so naturally. Yes. Sifu, hope you're proud. <laughs> yeah. yeah, so Julia, what's your kind of one minute introduction about what you do? Uh, so, occupation-wise, I'm an occupational therapist and very much in line of what I do, I help injured workers return to work um, and that involves a lot of veterans and yeah, yeah that's probably my main caseload. Yeah, that's cool. And outside of work, what do you like to do? Yep, outside of work, I also well, I do Wing Chun. I'm in my Wing Chun uniform currently. Yeah. And I also uh, I go to church um, and I also go to calisthenics. Oh. Um, yeah, so there's a few things. Also, I love my cat, so I spend a yeah. lot of time with my cat. Oh, that's yeah. awesome. So we want to go right from the beginning. So Julia, what kind of child were you like growing up? Um, I was a curious, <laughs> Somewhat rebellious child. <laughs> yes. I think I can see it in you. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, were you like a very confident? Were you extroverted? Were you quiet? Um, I think I saw myself as extroverted as a child, um, but the more I got to know myself and grow up, the more I feel I'm well naturally actually an introvert. So, yeah. <gasps> Surprise! Yeah. Yeah. Not so surprising now I feel. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And how did you um, like school and fit in the environment? Were you the class clown at the time? Were you the sporty one, the popular one? Oh, stereotypes. Um, yeah, <laughs> I know, right? Just trying to stick yeah. labels. Okay. Um, at school. I kind of dabbled in a few things. I did sports, I did tennis, and wow. I like softball, and I also did music. So I played percussion, and oh. I was a percussion section leader in my orchestra, for example. And things. Yeah. Wow, so cool. And do you still do percussion to this day? Not really, unless yeah. you count beating on my steering wheel in the car. <laughs> yeah, that's Solid. Percussion. Solid. And how did you sort of choose percussion at the time? Um, I was good at it, so they like do aptitude tests to intake students and like kind of tell them which um, instrument to play. Yeah. Yeah, and for me the test was like you had to rub and tap <laughs> the switch, and apparently <laughs> I did it better than other kids, and they're like, "Yep, you can play percussion." So. Wow, so good. That's how I ended up in percussion. Um, you never had the opportunity to like play like brass instruments. Um, or, I like... tried. Yeah. Yep, my. Only attempt to play the trumpet. Yeah. I was described as a dying cow, so <laughs> I did not continue that. No. Yeah. What about the strings? Not really. Um, I mean, I strum chords on a guitar, yeah. but that's about it. It's not anything particularly skilled. I don't pick notes. I don't do riffs or anything. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. And how was high school for you? Did you enjoy high school? My school was interesting. I went to um, a school where, so I went from a school where there was a lot of Asians yeah. and where I was kind of quite normal to a school where there was, I was one of a handful of Asians. Wow. Yeah, so. And that made you incredibly popular, right? Um, <laughs> not really. Like, I, I hung out with Islander kids, actually, because oh, they were the closest cool. to me culturally, like they were different to yeah. what was a very white <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, um, and it meant that I actually did, I did like at times hear things that were, that could be interpreted as racist. quite racist. <laughs> yeah. Wow, and does that take like a blow to your self-esteem, like moving into mm, high school? Not so much, I think it's just more like, okay, like, you know, there's different societies, there's different places in, even close to you, or if you go out into the world, so. Yeah. I think from a young age even, like, I got to experience that there's different environments, environments where I might look like the majority of people yeah. and environments where I don't. Yeah, yeah. that's awesome because I know like I had some friends, they were like the only Asian in a white school and then growing up they would always wish that they were white, like did that ever like come to you like, oh, like I wouldn't stick out so much or... Not so much, but yeah. I also like... Part of you. <laughs> yeah, see that's the thing, I've had other Asian friends who had the same situation yeah. but they bring like dumplings to school and yeah. then they're like oh what smells so bad and yeah. things but I never got to bring like Asian food to school I just had sandwiches and you know yeah, like white kid at heart yeah like, <laughs> my lunch was white so like it, it just fit in <laughs> um, yeah and I hung out with Islanders so yeah. it wasn't too too different yeah 
Yeah, that's cool. And did you have any particular favourite subjects at school at the time? Yeah, I thought I would just be Asian and like maths and science. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, though I did like the arts, um, like music. So in grade 10, you had to choose a, like a humanity subject. So social sciences or um, history. So I think I picked history. But then what I did was I did all my history work in like 10 minutes and I gave it to my teacher and I said, look, I've finished it all. Let me go to music class, which Aww. is currently on schedule. And then she's like, yeah, I'll write you a note. And I got to take off and do music as well. Wow. So that's pretty much like um, at that time you would have had to choose between history and music, but you finished history yeah. quick. So then you could go straight. Yeah, just because that's where my friends were and I like music. So. Yeah. Wait, couldn't you just drop history altogether, no? No, you had to. Yeah, you, you had, had to, to do like history and yeah. there's other electives. So I picked Japanese and some science, I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's awesome. And then like when you were thinking about the future in high school, what was sort of like floating through your mind, if anything? Um, I really wanted to be a physio. Uh, I think it's just because I knew what they were and <laughs> what OTs were. Yeah. Um, I wanted to help people and even as a kid in primary school, um, the teacher for our yearbook, they made us write like what we want to be. Yeah, and so then cute. half the class was like, I want to be a vet. And I'm like, I want to be a vet. And the teacher's like, you can't. Like everyone's just said they want to be a vet. You can't be a vet as well, Julia. I'm like, I want to be a comedian. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and like, I was like, I want to be a comedian then and make people laugh because everyone's yeah. so sad. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And my teacher's like, yep, yep, we're taking that. So that was like immortalized in the yearbook. Yeah, yeah. Oh, that's yeah. so cute. So I think like the idea of that though is still true for OT if you want to help yeah. people and yeah. be better, happier. Yeah. yeah, and you never did anything in comedy? Like you'd be so good. <laughs> no, um, I'd like help MC some yeah. friends' weddings. Yeah. That's about it. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. And then did your parents have any like expectations of what they wanted you to be? Um, no. Ah. No, I know. Like you'd think growing up and you know with my cultural background, yeah. it'd be like, be doctor. Yeah, be lawyer. Lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> But I was not urged to be either of those. And um, yeah, it was, it's strange. They were pretty not pressury regarding that. Yeah. Yeah, wow. Ones. Wow, and then what about your siblings? What kind of stuff did they pursue? Yeah, as an occupation wise. Yeah. Yeah, they're both optometrists. So yeah, I guess look at the age. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's pretty cool. And then at that time, so you were going to do physio, but then did you like, um, how did you sort of like hear about OT and etc.? Yeah, so I applied for physio and I didn't quite get the OP for it because yeah, I think I missed so out hard. by one. Oh, that hurts. Um, yeah, uh, it's all right. It, yeah. it put me where I am now. So yeah. I'm like, so I did a year of science and absolutely hated it. I, hated <laughs> it. I thought I liked science. Yeah. So it was good. And then like, I got to university and it's just, it was not what I was interested in. I didn't mm. want to do research for the rest of my life. So I looked at other options and um, someone had mentioned OT was like physio, so I just put it like, oh, I've just put OT there. And yeah. I got into the course. Yay! And for three years of the four year course, I didn't know what it was. So. <laughs> yeah, it's and now you know what it is. So, yeah. what exactly is OT? I know, it's the, it's the question of the century, I think. Yeah. So many people are like, what is an OT? Because they think the word occupation, right? Yeah. Um, it can mean so many things. but. That's also what it is. So occupation is what is meaningful to somebody. So as you know, adults-ish people, our occupation might be what the means we earn money with. Yeah. But for a child, it could be just to engage with friends and yeah. be able to play. Yeah. For a older person, they might be thinking, my occupation is literally to get through the day and be able to cook my own food and have that and yeah. then go out and play my job with my friends or something. <laughs> like, so what is meaningful to someone is different but yeah. occupational therapists I think the generalized way to explain it is we come up with solutions to help people return to what is meaningful to them. Yeah, yeah. Aww, that's beautiful. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah and so like um, can you like sort of run me through like sort of the client cases that you've dealt with and how you've you know able to bring them back to their normal? 
yeah it's it's fun to say that the way like normal is yeah. a, it's once again like a very loaded word yeah. <laughs> when it comes to injury um because there's all sorts of different types of injuries so like you can hurt your knee you could hurt your arm or you could hurt your mind like mental health conditions and yeah. things right so every client's different but i think the similar thing is that at the end of the day if you get injured and you can't do something meaningful your life is going to be pretty bad so yeah. um the ways that i help people is help find things that they can do so like can they go back to their work that they were doing before the injury and then if they can then yep let's you know get them stronger like work out who they need to see to build up those skills to get back to the work um, or else if it's not then it's to find work that is suitable so alternative oh. employment or um, other meaningful activities so sometimes veterans just don't get back to work it's just yeah. the reality of what they experience yeah. and doing something meaningful to them finding a community engaged like some kind of group that means that they get out of their house is you know it's meaningful and it's yeah. helping them function hmm, that's pretty interesting yeah. and what about like what is the is there like much overlap with physio or like will you um like personally help them massage some kind of point or like yeah <laughs> i know so many physios yeah. will take you saying that yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> Oops. Um, so no um I, at first i thought there was like because yeah. people they don't understand ot so they're like it's yeah. the same thing but yeah. um ot's are very focused on solving the problem through environmental so yeah. um it could be assistive aids like for example if you couldn't stand up for five minutes to take a shower yeah. then you use a shower chair you can sit there and do that so while a physio could prescribe a shower chair yeah. that usually falls within the ot's responsibilities ah. whereas a physio would be like okay um let's work on your leg strength and let's see how we can get your legs moving and strong enough to that you can stand for five minutes in the yeah. shower you know like so the our function is the same have a shower but our means to solving that problem is different so interesting it's sort of like more changing the environmental factors it can be yeah it can be more about that but it's also we have to know the physical things so like we have to know in our heads like okay you know this person we shouldn't just let them sit forever there is a goal to you know get them to a physio so they can yeah and ah yeah, that's interesting that mm -hmm. and like so like um when in the timeline of things do people like go see an ot so first like mm -hmm. Immediately, if I like sprain my ankle, then I probably go straight to the physio, yes. and then. But like this is obviously like a more minor kind of injury, and then. So is it after they've generally seen the physio, then they go to an OT? Um. Yep. Or I think it's for maybe more serious uh, injuries. Then they yeah. might before they discharge from hospital and they go home and they have to do all these things that you do on a day-to-day -day basis yeah. by yourself. Then an OT might assess and help with that. Um, and the type of OT work that I do is actually more about work than it's about, you know, okay, now we've got this injury, it affects you in this way, how can we regain that function or regain your ability to do your work so that you can get back to work? Oh, yeah. so it's like more assisting them to get back to their original job yeah. if they can? Yeah, yeah, and like oh, grading cool. it. So, you know, maybe you have to, maybe you're a warehouse worker and you have to lift like... Yeah, heavy stuff. Yep, yeah, heavy stuff repeatedly. So you might just do 15 minutes at a time. We'll build that up, build it up until you can do the whole amount of work. Ah, that's cool. And just wondering for OT, is it generally like a, um, do you see like the same client like quite regularly through weeks or is it kind of like you can go to the, I don't, I don't even know like how it works. You like go to the house and suss out the environment and be like, yeah, you need this, this, this. And then you can just that's set and forget. Or like, is there the ongoing kind of, it's both. It's both. It's hard. <laughs> it's hard. Yeah, it's really case dependent. I can't yeah. prescribe one way to get through a case. Yeah. yeah. And what about um, in terms of like the stuff that you learn at uni? So would it be like fifty percent like body anatomy, and then like fifty percent like um, body and like sort of external world interaction, or how do you sort of like what are kind of like the different subjects if someone were to think about studying OT? Yeah. Okay. So yes, there is anatomy, there's physiology, yeah, which is 
Uh, it's great. Like I still surprise people with how much anatomy I remember. Like, Did you just study that? I know like, that's just in my noggin. Um, but also um, mental health. We yeah. do subjects on psychiatry. Yeah. Um, we've learned some pharmacology, so like you know drugs and what they do. Hey. Yeah. yeah. Um, you have to learn about legal implications of the work as well. Um, world models, like you know, the World Health Organization and their recommendations on OTs and stuff like that. Yeah. And this is a few years ago, so it might have changed, but I believe also it's about how you set up programs and like how OTs work with different. Um, different allied health, so we go out to prax, we go out to yeah. hospitals, we go out to community um, yeah. health centres and things and get to experience what an OT does in each of those settings. Yeah, that's awesome. And so when you're studying that degree where you're like, yeah, man, I found it, this is my passion, or what was, or were you kind of like, oh man, if I was a physio, that would be much better. Um, no, I think OT was definitely the better fit for me because ah, yeah, and you're very it's lucky. broad, right? Yeah. Like, I could work with kids, which I'd never want to do. <laughs> you could work with geriatric population. You can work with like a hospital. You yeah. can work in community rehabilitation, mental health. What well, I'm in occupational rehabilitation, yeah. um, driving assessments. Yeah. Um, you can really branch out and do very niche things. Hand therapy. Oh. Yeah, like there's so many things. So um, I liked that because. I got to the end of my four years and I still wasn't sure what I wanted to do. I knew yeah. what I didn't want to do. Yeah. I knew I just did not like a peed setting, yeah. but I didn't know anything else other than that. So yeah. I just fell into the right place, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. that's so cool. And what do you like love most about OT and what are the downsides of OT? Um, OT. I'll start with the downsides. So yeah. Good, right? <laughs> um, so, Downsides of OT is no one knows what OTs do. Yeah, um, what a pain to explain every single yeah, time. Durant, we're fine. trying to get this podcast out to dispel <laughs> the rumours. <laughs> it's fine because it's good to ask and OTs yeah. get better explaining the more they do it. I've done it yeah. a few times. Okay, now. we'll ask you again after the podcast. Check oh. that. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, and I think... Uh, a lot of people, they're like, oh, OTs are like physios, right? Yeah. And then they get into that, like, oh, yeah. so like, you have to, like, you know, do massages and touch people. I'm like, no, I never yeah. touch people. <laughs> like, the people show me the gruesome pictures from their injuries, and I'm like, you don't, you really don't have to yeah. do that. <laughs> Too much information. Yeah, TMI. Yeah. So um, I have said that many times throughout my work. <laughs> yes, I've actually said it this week. I'm just like, I don't need to see that. <laughs> um, and the good side is it's yeah it's a lot of opportunities you can go yeah. any direction you want with ot i feel and oh. when you know another ot like there's just this like oh you're an ot you get it yeah <laughs> yeah so that's really nice yeah that's cool yeah. and then you also said there was like ot for like mental health so mm. what kind of stuff would that look like because i feel like um it's quite easy to imagine that like if someone had a physical disability mm -hmm preventing them from showering, putting that shower chair in. Yep. But someone who's like struggling mentally, how would you sort of kind of help them? Yeah, um, so I've got some psychologist colleagues, so I would never presume that I know anything near as much as they do. Yeah. So I do ask Disclaimer, questions. disclaimer, disclaimer. Yeah. yeah. However, uh, OTs do, so I guess it's that core belief that people need meaningful activity to uh, do well. Right? So yeah. if your mental health is not well, then there's a chance that you're not doing meaningful activity. So OTs, knowing that and working with mental health, they look at, okay, like how can we increase your function through something that's meaningful? And that could be something physical, you know? It could be like, oh, let's find a sport. And then they do this sport and they're like, this is great. And then yeah. dopamine levels rise. Yeah. And like the chemical part improves. But it yeah. could just be literally them getting out of the house yeah. and like, they're like, oh, I've found, you know, actually I can access the community. I can use a bus now by myself, yeah. which then opens the doors and it can also improve their, um, their meaningful activity. So it's like enabling bits of their life to do more things that might give their life meaning. Yeah, that's yeah. so cool. It's almost like being like a helpful best friend, right? It's like kind of. Yeah, yeah. just like helping them. Like, have you considered trying this if you don't like that? Yep. Like, yep. And 
I mean, there's a lot of things that people can do, like cognitive behavior therapy and like yeah. just therapy. And I think that is so important for mental health rehabilitation. Yeah. But I think OTs also bring in that like that focus of holistic. Yeah. What makes them want to, you know, do things and the yeah. trying to get them to do things. Yeah, that's cool. And how did you sort of? Um, because OT has a lot of different specialisations, how did you choose the occupational? I just fell into it. <laughs> <laughs> Was it like you just got a job out of uni yeah. and you're like, yeah yep. man, let's keep going? Yep, that's literally it. That's literally it. I didn't... I applied for different places. Yeah. I was in the top five or three or something um, for a hospital that was very competitive yeah. in the local area. And um, I just missed out and like, yeah. I was like, oh damn, I really thought I wanted to do rehabilitation. That's what yeah. I was in the hospital. Yeah, sounds um, kind of fun. <laughs> yeah, and I thought that was it. And then um, my friend just calls me out of the blue. She's like, hey, have you got a job yet? I'm like, no. Yeah. <laughs> and then um, she said for me to apply to the place where I'm working now in yeah. off rehab. And I went in, interviewed, got the job and I haven't left. Wow, so this is the same job as straight out of uni? Yep. Wow! Yeah. yeah, I think that's also to do with my personality. I don't quit things. <laughs> <laughs> don't, don't like change? Quit. I, no, it's not I don't like change. I don't like to quit. I don't like to let things defeat me. So, yeah, yeah I, I, I think this is also a good job in terms of flexibility. So I like that and I don't want to let that go. So I will fight for that. So, yeah, that's yeah. pretty good. Um, and it's kind of like being an OT, is it kind of like a nine to five? Like you sit in your office and then people visit you? And... No, see if you were in a hospital, yes, yes. you would have to <laughs> um, But my work, um, I go out to clients, I work from home, I work from our office. Yeah, how do you work yeah. from home when like, do they like, so um, do all of your interactions have to be in person or can they be online? Yeah, it can be online, so telehealth, but I'm also writing a lot of reports. I also do some management of our team kind of things. Yeah. So, Woohoo. yeah, like there's like team office leader. Space work. Yeah, there's office space work that I can do. So yeah. I do that from home or from the office. And yeah, it's a lot of telephone calls, yeah. emailing, all wow. of that. Yeah. Wow. And like, if you were to sort of like generalize, like how many patients do you see per day? Because now you're doing management stuff and that would take more into the, like helping the other OTs, kind of? Yeah, so, it's, it's so case management, which is also what I'm doing. Whoa. Um, yes, it's a fancy term for saying I, I look after a certain amount of cases. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, so uh, that, that's important. So each of my clients is very important, but you learn to prioritize because your team member is also super important. Like yeah. the welfare of my team is paramount to success, right? Because yeah. if I have to carry the team and I don't invest any time in them, it'd be terrible. So yeah. um, I find that I do prioritize, like if I need to check reports, if I need to tell someone how to do something or work through a problem with them, yeah. I like to prioritize that above my own client work because yeah. I just want to get it sorted and then they can go and help people and then I can go back to helping people. So it does mean I work over time a bit sometimes. Aww. Just sometimes, just sometimes. So proud of just you. Just a little bit. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Wow, what a good leader. Well, you have to make sure that your team is good. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah, good. yeah, that's true. Cool, and then let's talk about Wing Chun. Wing when Chun. did that start, the desire yeah. to fight? <laughs> uh, the desire to do martial arts started when I was six. Ah, cute. Yep. Um, I joined uh, karate. Yes. Uh, yep, it was at my school. My parents were like, off you go, you can do karate. And then a few classes in, um, I decided I was like a master and yes. I kicked this part of a, um, a railing, so there's like the there's the rail and then there's like the balustrade or whatever that yeah, thing yeah. is vertically down. Um, and I kicked through this wooden balustrade clean through, it snapped wow, in half. Wow. And it snapped and it fell down like the stairs. Unfortunately, it landed pretty close to my brother and my parents saw that and they're like, you are never doing martial arts again. Oh. <laughs> yeah. So I was not allowed to do martial arts. As much as I thought it was cool, I wasn't allowed to do it um, until I was... 25 or 6. Yeah. Yeah. And then I, I was like, hey mom, like, I'm pretty old now. Yeah. I'm doing martial arts. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, and then she said, um, okay, you can, uh, but you have to do something that's southern Chinese and preferably like Wing Chun because that's a lot of that in Hong Kong. I said, okay. <laughs> and then, uh, but yeah, and then I googled where I can do Wing Chun and here I am. Was this the first place that you tried? Yes, yeah. Uh. So, um, it, I saw a few schools. Yeah. Um, and probably subtly racist of me, but yeah. like I saw Sifu's photo and I'm like, oh, he's a guy who is Asian. Yeah, <laughs> I said agreed. <laughs> and then I saw other schools with maybe not Asian Sifus, which I'm like, that is a little bit strange to me. So yeah, I picked the authenticity. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, when I came here, I was like, wow, yeah. so many Asians. Yeah, I think that definitely helped with my decision making process. Yeah, and it helps like, you know, convincing your mom, right? Look, look, the China, and the yeah, going back to, to the roots. <laughs> I actually didn't really have to convince my parents much after that. So after I started learning Wing Chun, they're like, oh, you should maybe watch Ip Man because <laughs> uh, that's about Wing Chun. I'm like, really? Yeah. yeah so I, I'm not one of those people that saw Ip Man and said, I'm going to yeah, do Yeah, you saw it after. Yeah, I did it yeah, after I started Wing Chun. I'm like, oh, this is the thing. Yeah. yeah, that's cool. Yeah. And then so Wing Chun, it's not one of those like, um, how do I explain it? It's like, there are some like Kung Fu's where it's like, you know, they're doing like all these fancy moves from day one, but Wing Chun, I always feel like it's kind of like a slow burn. Yeah. And then as like a, you seem like you were very active, you know, kicking that, kicking that. And then yeah. like, did you ever, um, like when you saw Wing Chun, were you like, oh man, I want something more crazy. I want to do like what they do in the action movies. No, that never, that <laughs> didn't cross my mind at all because like while in my head I know like, yep, you can kick like that. I can play and try that in my own time. Um, but I like, I like the... I like the slow burn, I think. I like, yeah. okay, like this is how you do it and this is how you apply it. And then if you do it and you apply it well, this is what it looks like. And yeah. slowly unlocking it bit by bit. I, I do like that. Wow, you have good patience, huh? Well, yeah. I mean, or you just don't like quitting. First, <laughs> yeah, I don't like quitting. And the first, when I first started, I was a bit like, okay, oh, what's that technique? What's that technique? Yeah. But you kind of learn also like there's that part of you which is like, okay, Kung Fu is repeated. You know, you gotta do the same thing over and over oh, until yeah. you're the best at it. Yeah. yeah. And I have not come near that yet. So uh, still you see you see me do Silim Tal one moves the most because I still yeah. need to train those. So Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's yeah. cool. And um, when I talk to a lot of people, it's generally like when they hit Silum Tub 2 and then that's when they fall in love with Wing Chun. Did you have that tipping point? <laughs> I think I have some, like if you call it turning points, I think um, when I got to Sticky Hands, it was a bit like, oh, this is different because it's yeah. that sensitivity. Yeah, section four, right? Silum yeah. Pao. Yep. Nearly there. Walnut T cells. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, and also, when I got to Tum Kill, and oh. then like, you deal with like different distances yeah. and range, I think that also, like, I'm like, oh, okay, like, now I can be more versatile. Yeah. yeah. So I'm still unlocking and learning things, so I think that's important. Yeah. Do you ever feel like really impatient with the progress? Impatient? Yeah. Um, I'm sure I have felt that, but at the moment I'm pretty good. Yeah. 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 I can't think of a time specifically. Maybe like when I was in Silim Tower and I'm like, yes. oh, you know, like next person, next person, like I want to yeah. be as good as that person and that yeah. person. But not really. I think now that I'm in the third form, yeah. Um, Bill G! Yeah. Woo! <laughs> I think I don't see that rush anymore. It's yeah. more for me like, okay, like how do I do it so I do it really good and how do I do it so that it's applic applicable, practical, there we go. Yeah, that's practical wing <laughs> Yeah. Yep. Yeah, that's cool. Do you have any favorite moves that you do consistently? Um, I go through phases. Yeah. Um, I really like Wusau's. Really? Oh, I don't like them. <laughs> I really like Wusau. I like Hoon Sao. Nice. Yeah. I like. I really like Hoon Sao. Do you like your Bong Sao? Well, not really. Bong. I don't use it so much. Yeah. yeah. It's a tricky one to get right as yes. well. So. Ugh. Yes. Yeah. And then tell me about like, um, when did you start teaching um, Wing Chun? Teaching? Yeah. Mm, 20... 
18 maybe. Oh, actually quite a while, huh? Yeah, so I started with the Kids Fit teacher. Hey! Yeah, so, um, yeah, I wasn't an instructor, but I was a Kids Fit instructor. So yeah. that's hard. If you can teach a room full of screaming kids, as yeah. you can hear in the background, um, you could probably teach adults because they're not screaming children. Yeah, wow. And so you prefer to teach adults, huh? It's easier, it's easier. Yeah. yeah. But there's also fun things that kids do that you're yeah. like, oh, that's cute. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so wholesome. Yeah. Yeah, and can you sort of explain to the audience, like, you know, why you stuck with Wing Chun for so long and, like, what do you love about Wing Chun? Or maybe what are the downsides of Wing Chun? Um, I think with Wing Chun, it's, it's easy to get, to feel somewhat bored because like, they're like, oh, you're just using your hands a lot. Yeah. Like, it's, not super, <laughs> it's not a super athletic kung fu, but um, I think if you can understand kung fu, like kung fu as a whole, and like force, stepping with force, and like how little things, like even just body turning and stuff, like can magnify the force, it's quite interesting to see how much different your kung fu is perceived and yeah. you know sometimes you don't think you're doing that much better but then you know you go up against someone who's new and they're like whoa your arms are like steel bars yeah like, whoa you know like how, like keep me keep going backwards like how do you yeah. do that and you're like okay like so there is something you must have learned something to get to that point yeah 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 that's cool and what about what is the you know, weekly training look like for you? Do you have any tips yeah. to excel? <laughs> um, Do you practice? Consistent. I think yeah. be consistent. That's, you know, like if you take big breaks, uh, yeah. you tend to lose your form. You tend to forget things that you should know. <laughs> yeah. Or forget how to do it properly. Yeah. Um, but if you keep using it in your mind, um, knowing how you apply it and things like that, then be better. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Have you ever had like a break from Wing Chun where you just stopped like for like a month or? No, unless I'm traveling, no. Yeah. yeah. Oh, good on you. You practice at home every day? No, I don't. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> yeah, but what is Kung Fu, you know? Like, we're going to take this to another level. Yes, yes. <laughs> <for some level. laughs> what is Kung Fu? Yeah. Kung Fu means to work. Yeah. All right, so every day I'm working, am I not? So yeah. <laughs> How is that not go for? Or yeah. like, you know, if I'm training um, calisthenics, something else, it's working on muscles, but it's work yeah. and it's movement and it's learning about movement. Yeah. So how's that not going forward? Well? Yeah, <laughs> that's true. And tell me more about calisthenics. And for the people that don't know what it is, what's a, what is calisthenics? Um, I don't really know. It's... <laughs> It's body weight exercise. Mm. Yes, um, and you do different movements to kung fu. Like kung fu is a lot of pushing and like punching away from the body. Yeah. And calisthenics, I feel, is a lot of pulling your body towards something or ah. yeah, like working on back muscles that we don't often use. Yeah. And how'd you get into it? It's like muscles. niche. Yeah. How'd you get into it? It's kind of niche, huh? It's downstairs from my place. Ah, oh, convenience um, overrules everything. Home. Yep. <laughs> yep. Um, yeah. Actually, um, a past teacher of mine who used to come here got me to go. Yeah. And shout out to her. Yes. Shout out to you know who you are. <laughs> um, Cute. And yeah, um, I just kept going. And just never quit. <laughs> so, 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 so um, Julia, we need to settle this once and for all. What have you quit? <laughs> mm, what have I quit? So, same job, Wing Chun. You quit karate. Yeah, we got that, but that was yeah, forced that quit. Was withdrawn. I, was, I was withdrawn from karate. Music, um, you've sort of kind of like kept it up, you know, guitar or whatnot. Not really, you know? I don't play that so much. Okay, so, there we uh, go. There's not so much quitting that it's just, I, I listen to music. Today is Hottest 100 day, guys. Really? <laughs> <laughs> like, I like music, I just don't play it consistently. See, did I quit it? I guess I stopped it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah and what, what do you like dislike about quitting? Is it like, um, like, have you ever felt that like, you know, a lot of people like they jump from company to company seeing that, oh, mm -hmm. you know, better pay, maybe there's like easier to move up and whatnot, like, mm -hmm. 
Yeah, so like, is it, <laughs> why, why doesn't one quit? <laughs> I, I think it's a, uh, there's a, I hold loyalty very highly, yeah. right? Yeah, there's like a value to loyalty. And yeah. I think if you put in the hard work, eventually people will notice it. And they're like, okay, like that person's loyal and they stuck at it and they're dedicated. So yeah, yeah, you can switch around. That's definitely a way to go. You can probably increase your salary much yeah. faster. But I think there's also uh, something very honorable about being consistent, about yeah. you know being loyal to someone and you know I've had many opportunities because I've been loyal so yeah I think you got to see sometimes the value is not in your salary or the figure that yeah. you get each week it's also a lot of other things yeah have you ever been very like tempted like there are a lot of different martial arts and some of them are like whoa doing somersaults or like smashing bricks and like have you ever been tempted in like that sphere or like even work like you know there's like, hey, join my company, this is so much fun, even more flexibility for you. <laughs> that, that's hard to be, because my company is, I feel like that, you know, there's a spectrum of like super flexible and not flexible at all, and I'm like right down the spectrum. Wow, yeah, so are we talking like, like mainly like about like the hours or like, like the location or? Um, it's mostly the hours and like yeah. I get to choose where I work from and I make my own schedule so I get to choose when I see people and where I see them and things like that yeah so, that's pretty good yeah 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 um, and in terms of Kung Fu I we get to like Sifu is very good he gives us opportunities yeah. to learn different styles yeah. um, as instructors and it just makes your Kung Fu better because you know what there are holes in Kung Fu, nothing is yeah. unbeatable, so you get to see some of those, like, you know, what other people do, oh, okay, so that's like this, alright, so that translates, that's similar, and this is very different, how can I use that? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. I like that, I like it's just like collecting knowledge. Yeah, maybe you'll create your own Julia Kung Fu. Well, yes. <laughs> yes I keep joking about that. <laughs> oh, really? Oh, yeah. that's too funny. Yeah. yeah. And then tell me about travel. So you're someone who doesn't like quitting. Do you think you would ever like move to another country and just live there for like a year or a few years? Um, I haven't found a country where I could yet. Ah. I do like, uh, there are places I like and there are places where I visit and I'm like, I liked the, I like the journey, I like the trip, and I probably won't come back. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah um, That's very optimistic. Yeah. I like it, but I'm not coming back. <laughs> I don't need to, you know. I see yeah. what I need to. Um, maybe I'll find something. Maybe it's in South America. I have yeah. no idea. Um, I haven't, that, that thought hasn't crossed my mind to yeah. live somewhere else and work. Yeah, sounds good. And then tell me more about like when you got the travel bug. I saw like all your pics on Facebook. Mm. I was like, wow. Yeah, that comes with curiosity. So yeah. I said a while back that I'm a very curious person and I don't know, I, that curiosity takes me, I just, I just want to see what lots of other people live like and yeah. what their lives are like and what their culture is like. Yeah. And I like to say that I've been places as well. You know? Yeah, so it's, it's just like for me, I get to like, in my mental map, I'm like, oh, I've gone there, I've gone there. Yeah. Yeah. And you, when you travel, you meet people and you experience things that yeah. you can't at home because you're in your comfort zone. So Yeah. And when did you start going out to travel? Was this like during high school, university? Um, I did a Japanese trip in high school, mm. my high school. I went to uh, New Zealand with my orchestra in high school. Mm. So I guess it started there. but. Um, funding my own trips and traveling, yeah. uh, I think that was from about 20. Oh! Yeah, like it's because like, you have to earn some money yeah. to have enough to go places. So I see it, maybe about 20 years old I started. Wow, and where did you go in that 20? Like, what was your first kind I of think, major trip by yeah. yourself kind of thing? No, I mean, I traveled with, this was like for like a short term mission y kind of thing yeah. with um, another church. Yeah. I went to India. Woo! Yeah, pretty random. Yeah. <laughs> as the first place to go. But then shortly after India, I think I went to Europe. Unless I went to Europe first. It's been a while. I yeah. Remember. Yeah. Um, and that was with another friend. So my other friend went to Europe, went yeah. down to Spain, went into Morocco, Africa. Yeah. And then went back up. So, yeah. Wow, was that, was that like a one month trip or was that like a... That was 
maybe two, three weeks. It wow. wasn't super long. Yeah. yeah. Do you have any, do you think like traveling has really changed your perspective on life or whatever? Yeah, I think so. Uh, traveling is, it lets me, it firstly, like, yes, there is a travel bug, right? And I just like to do things that are different from every now and then. But yeah. also, I guess, because the other, there's like two sides of me. There's like a side of me that's super loyal. Yeah. And I'm like, you know, I, I like, you know, making sure that people are happy and things. So it's, my escape is to then go somewhere completely different yeah. and like travel and that's a break. It's kind of like do the complete opposite. Yeah. To sort of recharge yourself in some yeah. ways. Yeah. And just be challenged in different ways and new ways. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Do you have any sort of life changing trips you'd like to share? Life changing? Yeah. Or were they not that dramatic? Like, you're like, oh, I don't know. I think the second time I was in Europe, it was, there was definitely a time where I actually just felt genuinely lost. I yeah. didn't know, I didn't like have means to communicate because we didn't have smartphones or like the battery had died. I yeah. don't even remember. I get you. Um, and I think when I worked out how, like where to go and what I was doing, because I didn't have a map or anything, but I worked out, I like started to recognize places I knew and I worked my way back to a location I knew. Yeah. Um, that feeling of like, wow, like I didn't, I'm in a foreign country, I don't know the language, I didn't have a map, and I still managed to work my way back to somewhere that's familiar. Like yeah. that feeling of I did it myself was yeah. you know, pretty awesome. Yeah. Ooh. And have you had any sort of like, have you ever done solo trips? Um, solo, I did. At America, yeah. I went through yeah. America Ooh. bits of it by myself. Yeah, and did you ever sort of like um, at any point in time sort of feel like you were in a dangerous situation or X, Y, Z? Um, yes, yeah, I guess. Um, it was, I stayed in Harlem when I was in New York mm. and like sometimes people think Harlem is a poor suburb, low socioeconomic suburb where there's crime. Yeah. So I was living in not that part and then there were tracks and then I went across the tracks and it immediately felt less safe. <laughs> there were like huddles of people and I was walking past a huddle of people and they were like hollering at me and I'm like, uh, gosh, then yeah. this is not safe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I just kept walking. And at the time, I didn't know Wing Chun, so, yeah. you know, I think that gave me some confidence to keep walking. And I was fine, like they didn't come after me, they were just hollering. Maybe they had alcohol or something and they yeah. just wanted to shout, so yeah. it was fine. And have end. you ever had to use Wing Chun because of danger? No. Really? Not really, no. no. Yeah, really people cool. are like, oh, you've been so many places, surely like, yeah. they Yeah. attack you. Yeah. <laughs> um, and, oh, before Wing Chun, um, I've been in, dodgy situations like like someone like groping me and yeah. I didn't know what to do but yeah. now like if that same thing happened I would not stand and take it I would yeah. do something yeah yeah if you told your mom that she would have like signed you up like 10 years ago <laughs> oh, I don't know, I don't know. I, yeah. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of funny, like now you learn it, you actually don't really need to like use it much. Like maybe like people just sense it like, oh, no, 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 I don't want to. Also, like I stand and I'm pretty tall. Like in Asia, I don't think anyone will try and take me on because yeah. I'm pretty big. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think you can walk with an air of confidence and people gen generally will leave you be. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Um, yeah, and would you sort of consider yourself like a tomboy? I don't know. I don't think so. I think you do. <laughs> <laughs> I was just wondering. There's I like think a, you do. Yeah, uh, yeah. Explain. I just like too much to beat in my own drum, so. Yeah. 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 And would you consider yourself like a confident person? Um, yeah. Like, in, in a way, I would not think I'm like in your face confident, but yeah. I'm quietly confident. Yeah. And how mm. does one develop that confidence? You just be happy with your decisions. I think know yourself. Yeah. Like if you get to know what kind of person you are and 
I was just talking to B like today at lunchtime. Yeah. The more um, they teach like self awareness, I feel like the more you kind of like okay, like this is the kind of person I am, and yeah. okay, like this is how I'll react in certain situations. So I know, and you can plan, and you can have strategies to manage different things, and then you just be more confident because you know that you've got it under control. Yeah. yeah. Wow. And was this sort of like done through like journaling or like how does one sort of come to know yourself? Was it through the travelling or? A little bit travelling and actually quite a bit too through like because we didn't get taught this at school. They teach us at schools now by the way but um, when I was doing my OT degree uh, the, a lot of the mental health subjects kind of teach about like okay like emotional regulation yeah. and like you know like these are things that people do when they feel like this and this is like strategies you can use as an OT and I'm like there's strategies I can use for me if I feel like that. yeah 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 you can so, apply to yourself exactly and like you know having plans like knowing that if you start to feel like this then you probably need to do something else yeah you know? then yeah that helps yeah helps that's cool awareness yeah <laughs> And so, Julia, what do you think the meaning of life is, in your opinion? Oh, hey. 42. Aya, aya, uh, next. Uh, <laughs> um, meaning of life. It's what drives you to do what you do. Yeah. And for me, that's a lot of things. It's a lot of things. It's how I see God. It's how... Yeah. I see my place in the world and yeah. how I can help others. Yeah. And then how I choose to, knowing that, follow it through. Yeah. How do I act? How do I treat other people? How do I yeah. <laughs> yeah, behave? Yeah, that's cool. And Julia, if you won the lottery tomorrow, what would you do differently about your life? If I won the lottery tomorrow, I would probably get planning some trip to somewhere, probably South America. Yeah. Probably, and Antarctica. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds cool. Yeah. And the final question is, what is an ideal day in life for you? It can be work-related, it can be non-work-related. Ideal day in life. What time do you wake up? What kind of activities do you fill it with? I think I like getting up. I like doing my class. Our classes for calisthenics just got moved to 5.15 in the morning, so Aww. I like that because it means I've gotten some exercise done and I've yeah. done something that is like good for the body, good for the health. Um, have a nice breakfast and then just chill out with my cat for yeah. a good few hours there. Probably catch up with someone that I like that, you know, is nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> do something, maybe, maybe go out into nature, maybe. Yeah. Depends how hot it is. Yeah, not right now. Yeah. And yeah. Then just chill again with my cat. Yeah, wow. Um, that cat is like yeah. the focal point. She is the focal point, yes. Yeah. I adore my cat. That's cool. Yeah. Um, yeah, we're pretty much at the end of the podcast. Do you want to say bye? Bye. Bye. Well done, everyone. <laughs> and well done you, right? <laughs>